Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 9, Lesson 5 on cones and their volumes. Well, you've certainly seen a cone before, right? So we don't really have to discuss what a cone looks like. Imagine an ice cream cone in a classic ice cream cone, right? You know, so today what we're going to be doing is looking at cones, kind of thinking about how they work, right? and thinking and then learning about their volume formula and using it to do a variety of things. We won't be doing the surface area of a cone. That's a little bit too advanced for us. Maybe that'll have to wait until high school geometry. But let's take a look at how we find the volume of a cone. All right, so another common solid that's very similar to a pyramid is a cone. Cones share similarities and differences with cylinders. So that's where we're gonna start the differences in the similarities of a cone with a cylinder. So let's take a look at exercise number one. A right cylinder and a right cone are both shown below. Each is the same height and have congruent base circles. A cross section of both is shown at the same height. Letter A, what is similar between the two cross sections? All right, this isn't too bad. Like, and actually, let's do A and B together. So A asks what is similar between the two cross sections, and B asks, not surprisingly, what is different between the two cross sections. So try to answer both of those, and then let's discuss. All right, well, what should be pretty obvious about both cross sections is both cross sections are circles. Both. Uh, that's almost the word circle, but not quite. Let's try that again. Both are circles. All right. Now, what's different between them? Well, here's the huge difference, right? In a cylinder, any horizontal cross section, the circle is a constant. But in a cone, the circular cross sections change. So in a cylinder, The circular, yeah, let's go with that. Circular cross sections are all identical, yeah, are all identical, but in a cone. They change size, right? And you can really, really see that, right? So towards the bottom of a cone, right, the circular cross section is going to be closer in size, that didn't look very good, to the, to the base circle, whereas right up at the top, even though it's going to be a circular cross section, it's going to be a very, very small circular cross section. And that makes a huge difference, and it's very similar, right, if we were comparing a prism to a pyramid, right? Very, very similar, right? They both will have cross sections that are, you know, are similar to the base shape, but the big difference is in a cylinder, that cross section is always the same circle, and in a cone, those circles are getting smaller as you get towards the vertex or the apex of the cone. All right. Now, a very, very important question. Let me get this out of the way and move this down. Whoops, let's try that again. All right, letter C. Which of these solids would have the greater volume? How can you justify without knowing the volume formula for a cone? So, I mean, I'm, you know, here I've got a cylinder and a cone. Both of them have the same circular bases and both of them have the same heights. Which one has the larger volume, and how can you tell? Pause the video now and try to write something down. Well, this really goes to the essence of volume, right? So the plain fact is the cylinder has a larger volume because the cone can 
can fit inside it, right? Volume measures three-dimensional space. So if one object can fit inside of another object, then by definition the object that fits inside has to have a smaller volume. Now a nice way of picturing this is literally by taking the cone and just sort of moving it over, and now you can really see, right, that that cone sits inside of the cylinder. Here you can also see that like constant cross section for the circle and then the smaller one for the cone. But regardless, this is all about volume, right? And the volume of that cone is smaller than the volume of the cylinder. Now keep in mind, the volume of a cylinder we found by taking the area of the base, right, and multiplying it by the height. The area of the base being pi r squared, right? The area of a circle and the height being, well, the height, h, whatever, it doesn't matter. The cone formula for volume is gonna be very, very similar, but it can't be the same because as we see, the volume of a cone must be less than the volume of a cylinder. So, the fascinating thing about a cone, right, it's clear that the volume of the cone is smaller than that of a cylinder, but the remarkable fact is that it is exactly one-third the volume. Exactly one-third the volume. Now, it's weird because you might almost think, you know, oh, a triangle kind of looks like a, a um, uh, sorry, a, a cone almost looks like a triangle. And, you know, a cylinder kind of from the side sort of looks like a rectangle. So you might think, oh, it should be half of the volume. But it's not. It's exactly one-third the volume. So let's play around with that in exercise number two. A cone is shown below with a base radius of four inches and a height of ten inches. The cylinder with the same height and radius is shown dashed. Letter A, find the volume of the surrounding cylinder. Show your work and round to the nearest hundredth of a cubic inch. All right, so you know you found the volume of cylinders in the last two lessons. I'd like you to pause the video now and try to find the volume of the cylinder, the dash cylinder, and then we'll go on to find the cone volume in just a moment. All right, well, let's do it, right? The volume of a cylinder, just like the volume of a prism, is the base area times the height. Right, that's gonna be pi times its radius squared, right? That's my base area, times the height, which is going to be 10 inches. And now we're gonna just do that all on the calculator. Here we go. We've got, let me bring this up a little bit farther, pi times four squared times 10. And that's gonna give me 502.8. 65 cubic inches. All right, so the volume of that cylinder. All right, and now let's do letter B. Find the volume of the cone by dividing the volume of the cylinder by three, right? Because that's what the cone is. The cone is one third of the volume of the cylinder. So the volume of the cone is going to be one third times our 502.65, or divided by three, times one third divided by three, no difference there. So I'm actually just gonna take my previous answer, do divided by three, and the volume of my cone is, and what do we want this to? Um, well, it didn't say, we'll just do it to the nearest hundredth, 167.55 cubic inches. But that's it. There's really nothing more to finding the volume of a cone than finding the volume of the sort of the equivalent cylinder and then either dividing by three or multiplying by one third, whichever makes more sense to you. All right, so let's play around with the volume of a cone more. Okay, now we can actually show both the volume of cone and the volume of a cylinder in their classic formulas. So let's take a look at those. Volume formula for cylinders and cones. For cylinders and cones with base radii, radius of R and a height of H, that's all that matters about cones and cylinders, their radius and their height, that's it. The volume of a cylinder is what we just talked about. It's pi R squared, which is the area of the base, times the height of the cylinder. The area of the base times the height of the cylinder. A cone is exactly the same formula, pi r squared times h, but then times one-third, 
or divided by three, whichever one you like. Although, if you do look in any geometry book or if you tend to look in math reference tables, they'll have a one-third out here instead of a division by three, but it's all the same thing. So let's now take a look at applying the volume formula of a cone for a common situation. Exercise number three. A paper cup is in the shape of a cone whose base diameter is eight centimeters and whose height is nine centimeters. Letter A. Find the volume of the cone using V equals one-third pi r squared times h. Show the substitutions to find the, to find the formula, um, to find the volume, and round to the nearest cubic centimeters. Okay, yeah, we definitely don't want to find the formula. Um, well, actually, it says show the substitutions to the formula, sorry, and round to the nearest cubic centimeter. Apparently, I, I, I can't read my own problem. All right, so <laughs> let's do this one together. Here we go. So the volume is going to be one-third times that base area, pi, times the radius. Now, that's going to be four squared times the height, nine. Okay, so remember that base radius, the diameter is eight, but the base radius is four. All at once, let's do this, okay? I don't wanna do it in stages this time. I'm gonna put one third in as one divided by three times pi times four squared times nine. You could also use the parentheses the way I did, but that will work just fine. And my volume now is 150.796, et cetera. I want it to the nearest cubic centimeter, so that's gonna be 151 cubic centimeters. Now that probably sounds like a pretty big volume, but a cubic centimeter is actually a very, very small volume. If you think about the length of a centimeter, now imagine a cube that is a centimeter by a centimeter by a centimeter. It's a pretty tiny cube, right? Most Lego bricks that you work with are actually bigger than a cubic centimeter. They're two, three, five, ten cubic centimeters. So 151 cubic centimeters might sound like a lot, but it isn't that much. Let's take a look at letter B. The volume of most drink containers in the United States is measured in fluid ounces. There are 29.6 cubic centimeters per fluid ounce. How many fluid ounces does this cup hold to the nearest ounce? All right. So let's talk about ounces, right? When we have like a, like a typical soda drink or something like that, that's typically 12 fluid ounces. Well, how many fluid ounces are in this conical cup? Use this conversion factor and figure that out. Pause the video now. All right. Well, it's, again, simple enough. 151 cubic centimeters divided by 29.6 cubic centimeters per fluid ounce. And let's see what we have. All right, 151 divided by 29.6 gives me 5.101, and that would be five fluid ounces. So you could imagine actually maybe going to the grocery store, I know that they have these in our grocery store, and buying cups, paper cups, that are in the shape of a cone, right? A shape of a cone. Maybe it even is a cone that looks kind of like that, right? And you could even see them as being advertised as holding five fluid ounces. And how could you figure that out? Well, by you measuring off the dimensions of the cone, calculating then its volume in cubic centimeters, and then of course you'd need to have this conversion factor of 29.6 cubic centimeters per fluid ounce to change that 151 cubic centimeters into something that's more usable. All right, let's take a look at one more problem with cones. Exercise number four. One of our favorites, which solid below has a greater volume? Justify your answer. So is it the cylinder that has a diameter of six inches and a height of nine inches? Or is it the cone that has a diameter of 10 inches and a height of 11 inches? Which one's gonna have the greater volume? Pause the video now and try to figure that out. Now, it seems like maybe it should be the cone because both of the dimensions of the cone are larger than the dimensions of the cylinder. 
But never forget that cone also has that one third thrown in, which really reduces the size of the volume, right, overall. But let's do, of course, what we should, which is calculate both volumes. For a cil cylinder, it's gonna be pi times r squared times h. So that's going to be pi times three squared, right, that's its radius, times nine. And that then we can figure out on our calculator. Let's move this over here, bring this up to here. Clear that out. We've got pi times three squared times nine. And that gives me a volume of, let's say 254 cubic inches. We'll just round to the nearest cubic inch and hope that we can tell. Now with the cone, the cone is exactly the same formula, but with a one-third. One-third pi r squared h. So the volume of a cone will be one-third pi. Its radius is five. Its height is 11. So let's figure out what that is. Clear that out. One divided by three for the fraction one-third times pi, don't forget the number pi. That's the one, number one thing students will forget. They'll forget to throw the pi in, which will obviously make a huge difference in terms of your answer. And the volume of the cone, 288 cubic inches. Let's now see our comparison. 288 versus 254, relatively close, but our cone wins the day, right? It has a Slightly larger volume, approximately, what, 34 cubic inches, which you know, is decent, right? Right, decently more large, larger, whatever. Um, but it's very difficult to tell until you've worked out all the numbers which one of these things would hold more volume. All right, let's wrap it up, right? So today, we just generally looked at a cone. Right? And a cone is very, very similar to the pyramids that we've been seeing in previous years. It's kind of like a pyramid mixed with a cylinder, right? It's got a circular base, right? It's only got two faces, right? That circular base and this weird lateral thing that wraps around it. We don't need to think about that too much because we're not doing the surface area of a cone. The interesting thing about a cone is it's got exactly the same volume formula as a cylinder except it's got a factor of one-third thrown in. Very similar to how the area formula of a triangle relates to the area formula of a rectangle, except with the inclusion of a one-half. Well, for a, for a cone, we include the one-third factor. We'll use the volume formula for a cone a little bit more in our last lesson when we look at spheres. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.